Preview. Bienvenidos a todos. Welcome to everyone. We continue with the Easter season. This is the sixth Sunday in Easter. We have one more to go next week as there are 50 days in the season of Easter until we get to the Sunday of Pentecost when Christ sends the Holy Spirit upon his disciples. And so we continue with our Easter greeting. I think you know it by now. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. We continue reading through the Gospel of Luke with our spring theme of studying scripture, all in. And from our reading today, Luke chapter 24, verses 36 through 49, we have our message in unity this week, a whole new world. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Living God, the resurrection of Jesus changes everything and out from the depths of destruction brings to us a whole new world. Stand here in our midst and grant us your peace. Then send us as your witnesses that all may know the forgiveness of sin in Jesus' name, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. There is a link to a Google Doc in the description of this worship video, and that Google Doc has the words so that you can sing along with me at home. If you have one of our red hymnals, the hymn number is 886, hymn 886, Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. And we are going to sing verses one through four and six. Church in earth in heaven. 
Our scripture this morning is from the 24th chapter of Luke, verses 36 through 49. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I was a kid, I loved reading books about ghosts. I checked out all the supposedly true ghost story books from my school library. And I raced through them, both delighted and frightened by each story. And then when bedtime rolled around, the fear would take over and I'd end up on the floor in my sleeping bag next to my parents' bed. I had plenty of room in my imagination to accommodate ghosts. And it seems the disciples did too. After all, they knew how to check for a ghost. Flesh and bones? Yep. Well, not a ghost. Eats and digests food? Yep, definitely not a ghost. The disciples are filled with joy and disbelief and wonder all at the same time. Because while they too had plenty of room in their imaginations for ghosts, they hadn't imagined this. Jesus crucified and laying in a tomb now alive and here with them, flesh and bones and all. They had not imagined this. Even though Jesus has had told the disciples as they journeyed together that this would happen. Even though the women had told them that Jesus had risen. Even though the two disciples walking to Emmaus had seen Jesus and recognized him, had shared a meal with him. Now, here was Jesus, raised from the dead, right in front of them, eating a piece of fish. And they were filled with joy and disbelief and wonder. Their minds are blown their imaginations running wild as Jesus explains the scriptures to them. If Jesus is here with them, raised from the dead, 
What happens next? What might be possible now? This was a whole new world. And the prospect of a whole new world can be terrifying and joyful and unbelievable and wonderful all at once. We would know. We are right now embarking on a whole new world. As more people get vaccinated, what might be possible? Now that we've learned many people can work productively from home, what might be possible? Now that we've seen with new eyes the disparities in our healthcare system, what might be possible? Now that we've figured out how to worship online to reach people far beyond Milwaukee with the gospel of Jesus, what might be possible? There's joy for sure. We're hugging vaccinated family members, in some cases for the first time in more than a year. Perhaps we'll even go to concerts and movies and maybe parties in the months to come. Maybe some of us will be able to cut down our commutes permanently. Others might be delighted by the prospect of returning to the office with their colleagues. But there's some fear too. When will we really feel fully safe in a crowd? How will we know when we can throw out or repurpose all those masks? Or how long we'll have to hang on to them just in case? Will the divisions in our country highlighted and exacerbated during the pandemic persist? Will we find a way forward together? Or will we go back to tiptoeing around our differences instead of engaging fully in relationships? Might we dare to imagine a whole new world? Jesus had been inviting his disciples into this new world all along. He preached it in his hometown at the start of his ministry when he read from the scroll, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he told those gathered in the synagogue that day, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And he told them how this scripture is fulfilled, how God's reign would come not just to those considered insiders, but among those considered outsiders too. And they weren't ready to hear it. They wanted to toss him off a cliff. A whole new world can be scary and fear can drive us to act in ways we never thought possible. The disciples were fearful at times too. Yet they were also witnesses despite their fears and their doubts. They saw Jesus healing liberating ministry. They joined him as he restored people to community, as he included those who had been left out. And later, fear took over and they abandoned him. And now here they are again, fearful again, as the risen Jesus comes to them. 
but he offers them his peace. And he opens their minds to understand scripture. He opens their minds to imagine a whole new world. And he calls them to proclaim this new world of repentance and forgiveness of sins to all people everywhere. The disciples will soon be empowered by the Holy Spirit to be witnesses witnesses who testify to God's reign and to all that is now possible because Jesus is alive, because the power of death has been destroyed. And if the power of death can be destroyed, so can the powers of oppression and greed and domination and all those powers that keep God's people and all creation from flourishing. Of this, we too are witnesses. We have encountered the living Jesus, not only in scripture, but in our daily lives, in our worship, in baptism, in Holy Communion, in our relationships with one another. Jesus continues to show up in our lives. He continues to open our minds, to open our imaginations to what might be possible. And still, the disciples, us disciples, are sometimes fearful. Disbelief and doubt still mingle with joy. A whole new world of liberation of justice and equity, of wholeness and well-being for all God's people. A thriving world with enough for everyone, enough resources, enough meaningful work, enough income, enough shelter, enough education, enough health care, enough opportunity and safety. Some of us wonder what we might gain in this new world. Some fear what we might lose. Some wrestle with both feelings. We might wonder, is all of this or any of it even possible? In our despair and doubt and fear, Jesus comes to us again, showing us grace, equipping us with the imagination and the courage to engage in this new world that is both coming and in Christ already here. Jesus is here, alive with us today, ready to expand our imaginations and blow our minds, inviting us to join him in the renewal and reconciliation of all things. Still today, that's a lot to take in. So maybe it would feel safer if the disciples had just seen a ghost, a specter that might scare us, but has no flesh, no bones, no real power to change anything. But don't we have enough voices already telling us what and whom to fear? Enough voices telling us a whole new world is too risky. There's too much to lose. Thanks be to God that Jesus lives. That Jesus invites us out of fear and disbelief and into joy and wonder. Jesus invites us to imagine, to wonder, and to witness, to witness to all that we have seen, to the ways we have encountered the risen Jesus, to all that is now possible for us and for all creation, because Jesus lives. Amen.
Rejoicing in God's promises, let us pray for the world, for the church, and for all who are in need. God of all creation, fill the world with your breath of life. From the tiniest quarks of protons and neutrons at the atomic level, to the largest supercluster of galaxies. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all peoples, we pray for peace among the nations, that justice roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Hear. prayer. God, who calls witnesses of Jesus' resurrection. Hold your church in faithfulness to your will. Inspire us by your spirit to serve our neighbors in love, to forgive our enemies, to proclaim freedom to the prisoners, and to let the oppressed go free. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of healing and comfort, send your spirit upon all who need healing in body, mind, or soul, especially everyone on Unity's prayer list, including this day, Jamie, Elaine, Ruth, Dale, Joe, Shelley, and Joey. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, beloved children of God, please offer any prayers you may have at this time, spoken aloud in the silence of your hearts or typed into the comments section of this worship video. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, who has reconciled earth and heaven through the resurrection of Jesus, hold us in the fellowship of all your saints who have finished this life before us until we are reunited together again on the day of resurrection when Jesus calls us each by name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Lord. prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathered together by the Holy Spirit in Jesus' presence, let us pray now in the words that he has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
to share with you a few ministry messages this week. Once again, thank you all for the ministry you do each and every day, especially during this pandemic of reaching out to one another, tending to the ministry of relationships, calling one another, visiting one another in a safe way, uh, whether it's outside in small groups, however you're able to do that. Thank you for that important ministry. Thank you also to those who are able to continue uh, giving an offering to your church uh, to sustain our ministries together. We have the opportunity to give an offering now during our worship service. There's a link in the description of this worship video. You can click on that to give electronically, or for those who prefer to use our envelopes, you can uh, give an offering in those envelopes th through the mail or bring those envelopes uh, by the church and uh, drop those in the mail slot in the door by the office. And this afternoon is our monthly outdoor gathering. It was uh, rescheduled from last Sunday. Uh, so at 4 p.m., we will gather for conversations and prayer in the yard of Tippecanoe Presbyterian Church, which is located at the corner of First and Saveland. And now our closing hymn is Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ. That same Google Doc linked in the uh, description of this worship video has the words for this hymn as well. Or if you have one of our hymnals, you can find it uh, number 674, 674, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ. To those who are worshiping here after the live stream service has ended by watching our recorded worship video, thank you so very much by join for joining us in worship at this time. Now our live stream worship service will be continuing with Holy Communion as Christ gathers his church together. And so if you would like to receive Holy Communion this week, please message us on Facebook or by email or give me a call any way that you can reach us. And we will be delighted to extend the same table of God's grace to you 
live and in person this week as well. And so now receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.